uh, play of the game from way down. Plus two, silence. The Rainer getting absolutely a team wipe. The living bombs going. Oh my goodness, the ring. Bob says they go gonna find Rainer. All right, welcome back everybody to the Nexus Gaming Series. For match number two of the evening, we've got a C West playoff matchup. And uh, if you're part of Division C, not only is this going to be a fun, exciting series to watch, but it's also your opportunity to play a little bit of bingo. Some Division C bingo that we got going on. Check the pins in Division C chat. We'll see if we get any of those cards filled out today. Could be a good time. But let's take a look. So we're going to see piecemeal versus Tide Collar Murgles. And uh, so I went ahead and erased the circumstances as to what happened here for the standing. So hopefully that uh, comes through on this correctly. So piecemeal, number three team with Tide Collar Murgles, the number six team. Tide Collar were tied for points with Clouded Minds, but ultimately had the tiebreaker. And taking a look at the bracket here. So that's not right. Hold on a second. And you know what? We'll just we'll just clear these all out. Clear that, clear that, and clear that. Is that right? There we go. Is that matching? Hold on, let me make sure that this even matches the uh, the actual bracket. See West tournament. Oh yeah, this is all kinds of screwed up. All right, well you know what? Hold on a second. We want to show this correctly. Did you can't counter pick stupids there? People all in the wrong spots. I thought this was fixed with Soothsayer, but apparently not. Okay. Then we've got... Mines. And then the match that we're watching now. All right. Now, let's see if this looks right. Okay, that should be correct. All right, let's try that again, shall we? There we go. All right. So we have uh, currently the Sea West playoffs. Would tap that 2 0 over can't counterpick stupid. Better Than Bots, 2-0 over Dat Tass, though. Arrogant Nephilim, 2-0 over Clouded Minds. And now, Piecemeal and Tide Collar Murgles. Whoever wins this match will be playing against Arrogant Nephilim in the semifinals. So there you go. All right, there, there we are. We're up to date. Let's uh, take a look at our maps. I'm going to put that away just so I don't potentially spoil something later. Uh, maps. All right, so maps. Piecemeal, Band, Out, Battlefield of Eternity, and Alterac Pass. The Tide Callers, Band Out, Braxis Holdout, and Tomb of the Spider Queen. And our first pick of the game of the series is going to be from Piecemeal. That's going to be the Infernal Shrines. Peep the Better Than Bots W. Indeed. 
Is that the team you're on, Megan? I can never remember. Like, there's so many people I just can't remember whose team they're on. I see them in chat all the time. I appreciate you being here, but connecting the dots with the teams just doesn't always doesn't always work. There are a lot of people. All right, game is all set up and ready to go. Let's get our teams introduced. On the left, we have piecemeal. It's going to be Silver Jackal playing the. Varian, Dark Knight on Greymane. MJ Doom going to be on that. Imperious. Zloth on Nazebo and Odd Thought playing Rightwing, the Destroyer. Over here for the right, we've got the Tide Collar Murgles. It's going to be Rise Robin playing your Rel. Mbob on Sylvanas. We got uh, Sheej playing the, the Jaina. Key 1108 playing Ariel? Yes. And then we've got uh, Kotip. On Johanna. You know, the funny thing is, is that, like, I type in all these names. I type in the, the players that are playing them, the heroes' names. And by the time I get into the game, I don't remember even who's playing in the game. Until I said Sheej's name, I didn't realize that Sheej was playing in the game. Even though I just typed it out. But anyways, Imperius up in the top lane working on that soak. Hi, it's me. It's me, Yoshi. You're playing. How do you do that? playing and typing at the same time. You're so good at this game. All right, well, Johanna did get the stall from the team here. The question is, does she make it out? And it's not looking great for uh, for Johanna here. Kotip gonna get taken out. First blood, great zombie wall there from uh, Zoloth, I think? Yeah, Zoloth. A little bit aggressive on the delay of the rotation there. And, uh, you know, Johanna can be killed. Zombie wall gonna go out another great zombie while getting both Oriel and Jaina in there, nearly getting the kill onto Sylvanas, but Greymane taking some damage there from the towers, and also a little bit of blizzard action. And uh, Dark Knight gonna be pulling back here. Face shift used from Brightwing, so getting that extra 20% health back to Greymane. But, I mean, let's be real, really, all that is is just... Right wing padding stats, right? Where's that healings? Heal other. 2600. Yup. Most of that from the uh, phase shift. So there you go. With or without balls, thank you for the follow. Also, Scarin23. So, uh, with or without balls, who are you playing? Or are you playing? Just, or are you, are you just watching? Like, I don't know if you're. Twitch name and player name are the same. Uh, it's going to be a taunt Varian here. Not quite able to make it onto the point. Now being so far forward, could fall and is. So one for one in the kills. But this kill is going to give the siege camp and possibly some extra damage here. Or not. Never mind. We have Merc Queen. We have a dead Varian. But we're going to rotate up into the mid lane. Okay. All right, so I haven't talked a whole lot about these level one talents, and I like to talk about them because they, they kind of tell us the direction these teams are going. So we got Searing Light for Oriel, getting that extra damage, getting some extra hope generation. And I love that on this map because, especially on these shrines, you can just get so much hope from the shrine defenders. You got the uh, Iron Skin upgrade. Hold your ground there for Johanna, getting the extra more shields more often. Also, the Fingers Frost for Jaina for the extra mana return and 10% additional critical damage. Got Dauntless for Urel having the additional physical armor for that Greyman. There's the Taunt going out. Polymorph going out as well onto Johanna. Finally is able to get that Iron Skin uh, while she's in the middle of that zombie well. And, you know, between the Taunt and the Slow from Polymorph, it's going to be a pr fairly easy to land those zombie wells. Finally, we've got this uh, Might of the Banshee Queen getting the additional attack speed and spell power from her attacks there. Once again, Johanna just getting brought so low, but MJ Doom going to fall there with the final shot coming from Oriel. Kotib looking for more. They get the jump onto Greymane. Righteous Hammer coming out onto uh, Brightwing, and she is lucky. She just barely dodged that detainment strike, but it doesn't matter. Jaina gets that kill. 
And these zombie walls have been on point. Speaking of zombie walls, the reason that Nazebo can do that is going into that thing of the deep. That, that talent, when they upgraded it, was so strong when it got 20% additional spell, spell power. It's still pretty good with just the 10% and the range. So currently sitting at 39 stacks for Nazebo, just under half for the 5%. But the first Punisher of the game with those kills going to go over to Tidecaller Murgles. It's going to be Lion's Maw here for Varian, getting that additional slow eventually. Also, of course, the additional damage. Cocktail build for Grimming, getting that range. And again, high value on a map like this. The Greater Polymorph, though, allowing Brightwing to polymorph from farther away and also getting the cooldown reduction when she hits somebody with her uh, Arcane Flare when they're polymorphed. And Varian trying to take the punches from this Protector, Punisher, whatever it is. Uh, Taunt going out onto Sylvanas. Greyman trying to get that kill, but Varian's just too low to stay in. Can they get the Johanna? Nah. Oriel. Oriel's so strong. Uh, finally here, the Valor's Brand upgrade for that percent damage, especially great with that level 7 cleave talent. And on Infernal Shrines, just like I said about uh, the Searing Light, the I think the cleave is normally the pick anyways there at 7. Holy something at Fervor. Gives uh, a lot of wave clear to Imperius, but it also allows him to combo with those level 1 and 4 talents for his Valor's Brand. So he's getting extra percent damage every time he cleaves onto somebody and extra healing. And when he's cleaving onto a whole team, potentially possible on the shrines like that, and also clearing the shrines, he basically just becomes an upgraded Zool without the auto attack speed. Looking for that taunt onto Jaina. There's the big heal coming out from Oriel. She's going to get polymorphed, but she's going to be able to make it out. Cocktail, nearly enough to finish. But in the mid lane here, we've got this siege camp pushing, and Yorel's going to come down here to, to maybe stomp on these minions. Um, and also maybe change your mind. <laughs> Seeing that, like, that zombie wall, if it's, I don't know, a half a second later, might actually have gotten a kill on Yorel. Because it looked like she didn't really know that that uh, Nazebo was nearby. And if he waited to drop that zombie wall, he probably could have caught her in there with the tower shots even. Siege Camp once again picked up by Tidecaller Murgles here. So Tidecaller Murgles are doing a really great job of controlling the map. They got that first uh, Punisher and they're going to get to level 10 first. They got the Resurrect, the Blessed Shield, the Water Elemental, uh, Sacred Ground, and Wailing Arrow. And with this advantage, oh, what a great Detainment Strike Blessed Shield combo. Not quite the follow-up from the damage to get that kill onto Nazebo, but a great setup. If, if you're the uh, if you're the healer and tank there, you're like, come on, guys, like, get in on that. That should have been a kill. We see the danger pings coming out. Varian's looking as level 10 is available here for piecemeal as well. There's the taunt. Cursed bullet going out and a great impale from uh, the Imperius here. Sacred gown, ground goes out, but it's not going to be enough to save Yorel. It's going to be a double kill. The resurrect coming out, though is going to give them just the one permanent hero death. <laughs> Alto coming in with the uh, with with my good boy Al. Saying hello, hello, and welcome, Alto. All right, Shaman Camp going to be the target here. Tidecaller going to get taunted on this, the Sylvanas here, uh, but Johanna's going to use that uh, Condemn disrupting the zombie wall now at level seven he, uh, nazebo did go into the zombie wall upgrade dead rush so those zombies do rise they get additional health and there's the impale coming in what a combination from piecemeal and it takes so much to kill the johanna but you know what when you've got the burst potential coming out from grayman you got that impale she's already half health you got the silence you got the taunt like even Johanna is not immune to this. Every time she's gotten comboed by two of those abilities, she's under half health. Make it a third and she's toast. Uh, they are currently staying the same. I haven't gone in to check to see uh, what the emotes. There's another Celestial Charge coming up with the Taunt combo. Such a strong combination. She's coming right back thanks to that Resurrect. So ultimately, just the XP value going over to piecemeal, but still baiting out that, or not, I guess not baiting it, but forcing out that Resurrect is so good 
for piecemeal coming into this. They're 20 to 2 on the skeletal defenders here. There's the taunt onto Jaina. There's the celestial charge. The zombie wall might have kind of obstructed that a little bit here, but the ravenous spirit coming in, gonna get the kill onto Savannah's, might get the kill onto Oriel as well. So that's a triple kill. And there's no resurrect. Oh, another celestial charge. Cleaves coming out, looking for the Urel, even in the sacred ground. Does not matter. And we didn't even talk about the tens here for piecemeal. They've got the ravenous spirit we saw. Of course, Varian uh, took his level four ultimate taunt, but also went into shield wall. So he's got that extra protect damage. Cursed bullet, we got the emerald wind and uh, angelic armaments for uh, Imperius. And piecemeal here getting 39 on the point and making their way to get the, uh, as basically, as many siege camps as they can they don't have to pressure this they can pick up this punisher whenever it's advantageous for them to do so and they deem that to be right now this time no taunt as johanna using her iron skin it's going to be down for a little bit urel's going to get caught by the punisher the taunt plus celestial charge once again and these tanky heroes just they just can't survive with this amount of CC. And that means that the Brightwing pick, which initially looks like a very difficult healer pick to have, not such a big deal when you're just like, what? Point click dead. We do have pretty much almost almost every ultimate except for Jaina's here. The water elemental is currently offline. And they're both on the same talent, so... Pretty much the wall here goes down, and I think piecemeal likely pulls back here. The Punisher is down, and it's a full five on five. So we see the, the defense pings here. Are they gonna try to set up a bush gank? Is that the goal here? Is there any reason for them to come through here? Not really. They're gonna do it? Are they gonna do it? Okay, good, good call, Co-Tip. I mean, like, that just was surprising anyways. There was no reason for them to go through there anyway. So it was just a, a, a really danger play by uh, Tidecaller if they did go through there. But, you know what? I mean, good on piecemeal, because they, they were in a position that they could have taken advantage of, uh, of that play. But, you know what? Johanna said, nah. We don't want to go there. But we're going to check and make sure that you're not there. And they were. Siege Camp in the mid lane picked up by piecemeal. So that's going to come in, provide a little bit of pressure. Both teams down with one fort. So technically, even in the structures, it's going to be top lane for the next Punisher. And this is going to be a frozen Punisher. Big value Punisher coming up here. And uh, no Urel. So this is a five on four. They do get the Celestial Charge out, but it misses because of the Holy Ground. Uh, not Holy Ground, the uh, Iron Skin. And uh, there's the Sacred Ground. And they don't really have any way to get Urel out of there, so... Just, uh, just some ultimates used there. Still have basically more available on the side of piecemeal because their cooldowns are generally shorter. Only missing the Angelic Armaments at this point. There goes the banner. This is Banner of Dalaran. It's additional 20 spell power. Nice knockback, preventing the Varian from getting that taunt. Uh, but you know what? Urel is gonna be just fine. Might not have been, but ultimately was able to get out of there. And the Banner of Galaran has kind of become the kind of the preferred thing for Varian here. Gets the taunt, there's the Celestial Charge into the zombie wall. Sacred Gown goes down, but again, it doesn't matter. Sylvanas, however, falling to the Ravenous Spirit, and so is Oriel. Sylvanas is going to come back, but look at how much damage she's taking. She was at half health from two attacks from that Ravenous Spirit. And now Johanna having to go back as well. Didn't have a whole lot of health herself. So anyways, this banner of Dalaran thing that I was talking about kind of become the banner of choice. It used to be banner of Ironforge because that gives you the 20 armor. But with the level 20 upgrade, banner of Dalaran becomes a near constant uptime because it's a 25 second cooldown. And the cooldown gets cut in half if you take the... Uh, glory to the Alliance. In addition to that, it increases healing received by 50%. So you're not only are you getting more healing, 
but the healer is providing 20%. It's a huge bonus, and it's everybody there. And it covers all spell power abilities. And it's near full uptime. So it's just, it's absolutely gross. Johanna walking into this trap, though, uh, is able to walk out. Used the Blessed Shield. So that is one ultimate down for the side of Tidecaller. So, all right, Johanna's one and one. There's the taunt coming out. Celestial Charge coming in and just deleted again. The zombie wall's there to help. Uh, Urel going in, has the Sacred Gown, but is now going to have to pull out of it. Might be able to get the uh, kill onto Imperius. They can't quite get there, though. And Oriel does have a res, so Johanna's going to come back up. There's the zombie wall, and keep in mind, he upgraded that uh, pool of poison underneath that zombie wall, too. So that's, that's a really good combination. Big Angelic Armaments getting a ton of damage there, but the Emerald Wind used to zone out tide color and keep the variant safe so what i was talking about ring of poison here the zombie wall lasts an extra second and does just boatloads of damage while a player is in there it starts off small but gets bigger over time here variant looking for the jaina gets the taunt zombie wall coming out and just gone urel and johanna also very low maybe looking for that urel i think the uh yeah the ravenous spirit was going out there as well but got interrupted by blessed shield urel taken out by the gray mane and uh Oriel and Sylvanas going to fall in that as well. Only the Johanna left alive, but she just doesn't have the mana or the health to uh, to stick with it, so she kind of just had to bail out. So 33 defenders there picked up by Tidecaller Murgles, but ultimately it's going to go over to piecemeal here. Yeah, I, like the combinations, these guys have practiced this and they've done it really, really well. The taunt, the celestial charge, the Nazebo zombie wall, the polymorph. The only one without some kind of individual lockdown is Greymane, and you know what? That whatever. His lockdown is death. And he deals it well. There goes that banner. Once again, the additional spell power. Helping out both Nazebo and Brightwing in a significant way. And here comes that frozen Punisher. It's on its way to shut down this top keep. There's the bait pulling it over to the side. We've got the iron skin used to keep her nice and healthy. Doesn't get stunned or rooted with that. But that's gonna be down for another 14 seconds or so here at this point. Top keep is gonna go down. Piecemeal very close to level 20s here. And uh, Varian going in doesn't quite get the taunt where he wants it, but ends up getting it onto Johanna, and she gets just blown up. Resurrect coming in for Johanna here, but Key getting a little close there. Very low on health. Punisher sitting about 40%, sorry, 20% now. Emerald Wind gonna zone out the Urel, and she's taken out. This time, Johanna does not have that iron skin as she gets rooted, stunned, taunted, destroyed, and they're on their way to taking us into game number two. Maybe? Probably? As the core goes down. All right. We did get a couple of level 20 talents here. You know what? Vigilance um, is is not super common but when you're when you're going into teams that are auto auto attacking a lot which you know sylvanas does auto attacking that's about it really i mean urel uh so i mean reducing that taunt cooldown especially when so much of your comp is based around the ability to point click those cc's it's it's you know still really strong and it didn't even matter if they were at the very end of the game so 22 to 4. Piecemeal looked really strong in this. One kill each uh, for... Or one death each, I suppose, for each of the team, except for Zloth in this case. How many stacks did he get? Did we get? 150. So, there you go. All right, let's get set up for game number two. See where we're going, what we're doing. Looks like game number two is going to be on Volskaya Foundry. And it was the selection of Piecemeal, so sticking with that map pick. 
Or I guess first pick for uh, Tide Collar. Let's see. Okay, cool. We stayed on the correct side. I love it when I don't have to change, you know, heroes. They're just, oh, it's just the same hero. There you go. Wow. This is almost exactly the same draft from Tidegaller with one change. And... Really? Okay, both teams literally changed one hero. Interesting. Interesting. Fair enough. Well, let's get into the game, shall we? Let's see. So that was piecemeal. Got their point. All right. Starting it off on the left, we've got piecemeal. Currently up one to zero in this best of three series and uh so far all of division c west with two of dominations so can piecemeal finish that for all of the quarterfinals or can tide color break the mold Let's introduce our teams on the left we've got piecemeal mj doom on the imperious odd thought on brightwing dark knight on the gray mains loth playing the rainer and silver jackal on varian over here to the right, we've got Tide Collar Murgles. Gonna be Kotip playing Johanna, Key 1108. On Ariel, we got Umbob on Sylvanas, Rise Robin on Urel, and Sheej up there flying above everybody is the Raven. All right, so let's see. So far, uh, three talents the same for Tide Collar, except we've got Unfurling Shadows here for the Sylvanas, so she'll be able to stack those Shadow Daggers. We also have Portal Mastery for our good friend Medivh, being able to drop those portals from flight form, but also place both halves. Uh, meanwhile, on the other side, uh, exactly the same, and of course, Raynor going into Ace in the Hole. So, in theory, should be a very similar blow-up style, lots of CC comp, but Tidecallers now has Medivh, so that blow up doesn't quite work as well if uh if if the medieve knows what they're doing and you think they might i mean they picked the medieve right so they probably have an idea both teams gonna make their way onto their fortification camps just gray main for the one side whereas sylvanas oriel on the other so gonna get there's a little bit never mind they're gonna get them at almost exactly the same time but Tide Collar is going to be a little bit safer about it. Varian doesn't have that taunt yet, so still has to be a little bit careful. And uh, good old Medivh looking out for the team, scouting out what's going on here. Slight XP advantage over to Tide Collar and Murgles here. As uh, in the bot lane, MJ Doom trying to catch up to the wave clear that Urel was putting out. And there it is. Going to be taunt for Varian, as expected. <laughs> Megan saying, go Murgles, with the message highlight. Now, without spoiling it, do you know the result of this, Megan? Just wondering. Okay, that's fair. Just wondering. Support camp gonna be picked up here. Not quite, never mind. We see the taunt going out onto Sylvanas here, but uh, Silver Jackal a little far forward, taking a lot of the damage from the team, but it is gonna be the Biotic Committer going over to Piecemeal. They get that dropped right away. Oh, the Protect going out onto Oriole, but it doesn't matter. Greymane gonna fall as well, though. First and second blood, both teams sitting at one to one. But ultimately, does Grimmie... No, they ended up using the uh, turret. Oh, never mind. Rainer getting the kill on Johanna. Is there still a turret? I, I thought I only saw one turret go down. 
I guess I guess both turrets did go down. All right, so no item advantage for either team. As the protector going to get started in favor of piecemeal. Yeah, I just didn't see the blue one, so I thought maybe like maybe they uh, dropped it and uh, tide colored picked it up or something. But nobody has it, so clearly it was just dropped. All right, so 28% picked up for piecemeal. Level seven as well, they just picked that up, so let's uh, show you what they're going for that. Is that what I... Yeah, it, it is a slow, okay. Victory rush for Varian, going into that for the uh, the taunt build. Now, Tidecaller's still just a little bit away from getting level seven, so they're gonna pull back, clean up these lanes, maybe even get a little push. They've got Merc Queen. And they've got a, a fair bit of time, they can, about 60% is when they need to consider leaving the lane, like pop on their mounts and get over there. And right now they're just gonna knock down this tower. They still have this siege camp and again, it is empowered. So nice detainment strike from Key, keeping Varian away and uh, the portal. Gonna give them that fast rotation as long, or as well as having the, ro the Ravens, which do additional damage uh, after going through the portal. Fortification camp picked up for Tidecaller Murgles. So they do have a slight item advantage now. Although we see the Greymane Rainer heading down to pick up theirs as well. So that will eventually even out. But as long as Varian's still sitting here, like, they're not going to get this channel. Nice stun and then a Righteous Hammer follow-up. Ultimately allowing them to get the channel started. So 45% versus the 84% for piecemeal. Both teams sitting with one turret. And the channel going to continue in favor of Tidecaller here. For as long as they stay on it. There's the charge taunt with the protect though out of Medivh here. The Righteous Hammer coming back, knocking back the Grey Main. They get that kill from Urel. Kotip uh, chasing down the Varian here. And we got turrets falling. Both of them fall now. Varian very low. Gets, has the, sh the damage over time effect, but Sylvanas is going to get caught. So far, two for one, and the protector on the ground. Going over to Tidecaller Murgles. Oriel gonna get in along with Johanna. So you're all gonna head into the bot lane. Medivh uh, doesn't really have anybody to protect it. Who's gonna pop into that flight form and uh, just kind of stick with the team? Now, Medivh, at the very least, He's going to get some uh, Arcane Rift stacks here, as long as he hits them. But the other thing he can do, he can protect whoever's in the Protector. He can also provide a portal out. Uh, the Glove hitting Varian, knocking him into the corner. I think he's safe. There goes the, the Charge Taunt, but she's under her towers, so Savannah's going to be just fine. And uh, Varian going to get that heal coming out from brightwing taking that upgrade level seven phase shift so not only the vision but also a big shield an extra 10 percent i remember correctly uh okay doesn't say percent i guess that's the hyper shift talent that adds the percent percent so the other so this is this is another interesting talent unstable anomaly uh increases the slow of polymorph by 15 percent so that's pretty significant i think that makes it 40 percent um but it also does a percent damage so it used to just burst for like 150 damage now it does percent damage level 10's up here for both teams we'll get into that in a second as it looks like tidecaller wants the support camp urel gonna get taunted but has the protect but the protect's not available for johanna what a big uh polybomb though from the mediv hitting so many heroes given now the portal out but johanna's very low pops the iron skin so she is going to be able to make it all the way back gets the tap onto the well and you know what that was that was fantastic tidecaller was able to to pull them away i don't imagine that that was the goal from kotip to be that low and use the iron skin to get out of there but that's that's ultimately what happened But it looks like doesn't matter. Support camp is going to go over to piecemeal. And so far, structures in good shape for both teams. Slight advantage over to 
uh, Tide Collar with the kill onto that healing well in the wall down. Now, this is a little... I mean, are they coming in? Are they not? Like, they don't even seem to know what they want. There's the Greymane going into that Cursed Bullet. Uh, but it's going to be Greymane falling almost immediately after. Emerald Wind coming out. The Polybomb as well getting spread around here. Brightwing just in too deep as uh, Lion's Maw completed there for Varian. He's going to have that big slow that does not dissipate for two seconds. But uh, Shield Wall is going to save him. Arcane Rift now completed. Master's Touch. Never mind, Arcane Rift. And that's going to force MJ Doom to back off with those uh, kills. On to the, the fortification camp here for Tide Collar Mergles. Not a lot to do on this map in between objectives. You, ha you do have camps. The siege camps don't really give you a lot. It's really just kind of the gather XP phase of the map. Certainly, though, the Siege Camps do more when they've got a Merc Queen to support them. Not just shutting down the towers, but also getting that extra 60% damage. Hey, Korr, welcome. All right, so these uh, these ultimates, now that we're level 13 here, we got Resurrect, we got the Polybomb, uh, the Blessed Shield, Ardent Defender this time, and Wailing Arrow. Kind of interested to see the uh, Ardent Defender here. As opposed to the say like if they were going to take sacred ground before i would have thought they might have considered it here too uh we also have rainer's raider the shield wall the cursed bullet emerald wind and angelic armaments yorel again Recyclic, so happy recyclic has been getting all kinds of fun games tonight there's the taunt on to uh johanna there and she does have a turret so at some point she might consider dropping that Nobody on the point, 38% over to Tidecaller. Very in a, in a little bit of an island here. And there goes that turret with the Merc Queen value as well. So just pummeling away at Raynor. You're all jumping onto the point, knocking Varian back. Varian looking for Johanna, pops the Unstoppable. Also has the Protect. Varian gonna get taken out, hits that shield wall, but the Polybomb coming in, making sure that he's gonna get taken out. And great play, and with the Varian gone, uh, I don't see any way that Piecemeal comes in onto this point. This should be a protector for Tidecaller. And it looks like Piecemeal pretty well agrees with me. They're going to go ahead and head down, gather what soak they can, and, you know, I think that they don't do that? Okay, I was going to say, I think they just push down on the bot. But, uh... A little bit of a delay going into the mid lane, gathering that soak, and then heading over to potentially get the fortification camp. They don't quite get there. And now with this wall down, they're going to have to head back because this protector is coming in onto the wall. Beautiful placement of the laser. you love to see a laser hitting two towers and a wall. It feels so good. Uh, less good on that laser. But that's okay. Varian looking for the Sylvanas has the protect. You know, and I do have to point out, I, I said at the beginning, you know, as long as Medivh, you know, really gets it, like, then this is a completely different game. And it's been crucial. Medivh's protects have been so good at preventing the deaths that uh, Piecemeal wants in this game. So, absolutely fantastic play there. MJ Doom and Odd Thought looking to try to find somebody here. Couldn't quite get the angle they wanted for the attack onto the... Uh, I think they were looking primarily at the URL there. So there you go. And the Protector gonna go down... I don't know. If... They they both got out, but I think if you, uh, if you just stay in, you can get that shield. But they didn't really need the shield. Support camp is available. We're gonna see... Tidecaller head down to their fortification camp. But they're going to pick that up. And the question is, can they get up here quickly enough to stall this out? They cannot. They might have been able to with the portal. That might have been possible. And speaking of portal, they're looking for this Varian. There goes the Blessed Shield. The Silence coming out. Varian cannot shield while when he's silenced. And there you go, Biotic Emitter even used, trying to save the Varian, but not quite able to do so. 
And once again, using that portal for the quick engage here, MJ Doom gonna use that Celestial Charge just as a quick hop away from the team. Urel coming into the mid lane with the full minion wave is trying to see if she can't get a bunch of value out of this. She did take level 7 Avenging Wrath, so gets 25% additional damage when she lands basically on anything. But that Imperius, I thought Imperius was out. The team said, nah, rotate down, let's kill this Imperius, and Imperius is dead. And now with Sylvanas, they're going to start pushing into this bottom lane, working on the bottom fort here. I don't see any way that they don't get it. Uh, although their their wave is pushed pretty far back, and <laughs> Varian and Medivh kind of playing a game of chicken, dropping that portal, saying, "Hey, you know what? My team can rotate in on you at any time." But up in the top lane, piecemeal working on another wall, trying to get what they can, get the XP up, keep the siege camp pressuring in this top lane, but Urel's going to finish up mid lane as well. Tidecaller's doing a pretty good job of staying ahead in this game. They've still got all of their structures up. A couple of, you know, a little bit of wall damage, but that's all right. Yeah, absolutely, Kime. Kime's here for some Div C bingo. Alrighty, and exactly, Core pointing out that di that uh, Div C point C control point C here in the bot lane can I mean it can swing games a hundred percent in the other direction. Without level twenties, I think it'll be hard for uh, piecemeal to take down the fort and the keep if they don't have level twenties by the time this is is completed. But. I mean, it can still get, uh, like, I don't see them getting core. They might be able to get fort and keep, though, actually. That's what I should have said. Probably not core. If they can get the fort down, though, that can turn into a core. There goes the banner of, uh, I don't even remember, Stormwind? Well, there's Urel jumping in, knocking everybody back. The Wailing Arrow coming out. Imperius is going to go in to contest, as is Varian. But Imperius is going to fall to the Medivh. Varian now the next one to fall. And Medivh kind of popping through that portal, seeing if he can't get to the Rainer. And now with the control point coming up, I think Urel stays here. The rest of the team moves on. They have two turrets. They have Sylvanas. They can just move up here and, and you know, drop those turrets and at least get the wall down. Prepping for uh, the Protector to come in and, and potentially finish this game. Because there will be no safe defense for piecemeal with this. And there's that wall. And that's enough for him. They got 50% on the channel so far. Medivh hanging out here. So I imagine, yep, they're going to come up. Tr they're trying to work on that level 20, right? They they have hardly anything left to get there. In fact, at this point, I think that the trickle XP will get them to 20 before that protector is complete, or certainly by the time it gets to the wall. There it is. <laughs> the main problem with Polly is you don't get any cheeky camp steals. You know... I mean, sure, that's true, that's true, but there's something to be said about seeing a whole bunch of polybombs just spreading around. So Siege Camp was picked up here for piecemeal, going in the top lane. Uh, it'll take it a while for it to get any siege value. There goes, oh, which banner is that? Let's check that out. Where is it? Banner of Stormwind. It is the movement speed banner here. So Varian gonna get punched into the wall. Emerald Wind coming out is not enough to keep Varian alive. MJ Doom taking all kinds of turret damage. They do get the kill onto the Sylvanas though. And I thought MJ Doom would be dead by now, but ultimately is coming back in. It's level 20 Shield of Hope for Oreo. So giving her team a little bit of a boost there. Uh, does have the Resurrect, but doesn't use it on the Sylvanas kind of a surprise key what's that about do you just not like your savannah's player are you just saying screw you yikes keys man key with the major shade and this punisher doing or protector doing some major work here rainer doing it his best to stop it but it's just not happening Uh, 
All right, four kills to 12. So Tide Caller evening it up, and we've got ourselves the first best of three series of Division C West to go to a game three. Man, key with the shade, though. Can't imagine, like... Um, Bob must it. You know what? Key was just like, you know what? If you're just gonna int, then I'm not gonna res you. And then Um, Bob inted, and Key said, I'm not resing you. You, you just, you go think about what you did wrong in the graveyard. I'm just kidding, by the way. I don't, I don't think Solanus inted. That was, that was a great play. So game number three. Where are we going for game number three? Cursed Hollow. Uh, we're getting some different heroes, folks. Some of them are the same, though. But you know what the best part about this is? Is that they stayed on the same sides. Just want to say thanks, guys. Appreciate that. All right. Cursed Hollow going to be the pick. It is the selection of Tidecaller Murgles. And this will take a moment to get uh, some of these put in here. Wow, pretty much an entirely different team for piecemeal. Oriole and Johanna were banned out, as was Sylvanas and Mediv. By the not by the teams that were played that played them. So Medivh was banned out by piecemeal, Sylvanas was banned out by piecemeal, but Oriel and Johanna were both banned out by uh, Tidecaller Murgles. They did not want to give the opportunity for piecemeal to pick that up. All right, one single hero remains on the same team from the last two games. And we want to wager a guess? Don't, if you know, don't say what it is, right? If you were there, don't say what it is. But one single hero. Now, there is, there are uh, two heroes that switch sides. So I will say that. But one hero stayed on the same team from the last game and actually all three games. I'll give you that hint. Not that it's much of a hint, considering eight heroes were in game one and game two. All right, here we go. Game is all set up. Game number three. Let's get our teams introduced. Coming off of a hot win, it's the Tide Caller Murgles. And you know what? Let's introduce our game three of three hero. Rise Robin on your rel. Um, Bob going to be playing the Rainer. Sheej on Lee Ming. Kotip on Varian. And Key 1108 on Ana. And over here to the left, we've got Piecemeal. MJ Doom on the Thrall. Odd Dot on Stukov. Zloth on the Nazebo. Silver Jack on Kael'thas. And Dark Knight playing Uther. So this is the second uh, Nazebo game that they have in this. So as uh, Nazebo was very strong for them in the first game. Now, that said, Nazebo was really strong because they had the Brightwing and the Varian and the Imperius. So we'll see if the CC chain combo of Uther plus Kael'thas plus Thrall works out as favorably for this Nazebo. Pay no attention to... Oh, I'm already getting triggered, Cheech already getting triggered we will see the, actually you know what the funny thing is i oftentimes there's so much going on by level 13 that i'm i barely very rarely even look at what they are but we'll see we'll see there will be judging uh so speaking of judging what do we got we got the thing of the deep that we had in game number one there kalthos going into meta addict you love to see it no convection this game uh, Hammer of the Lightbringer for Uther, giving him those more consistent stuns once he finishes his auto-attack quest there. 
We got the low blow from Stu Cobb getting more damage when he's hitting heroes that are under 30% health with that silence and echo of the elements for Thrall. Meanwhile, for Tide Collar, we got the Force Armor, giving that extra mana return when Li Ming is low on mana. Also, the uh, Spell Armor. And that's, I, I say this every time, but just to throw it out there, because it always seems like this happens into a Chaos Loss. I just don't like it into Chaos Loss. <laughs> like, one Living Bomb, what, yeah, the Nazebo. Like, both of those, you know, one tick gets rid of the, the Spell Armor. So by the time that the Pyroblast gets to your face, it's completely negated. Uh, Dauntless going to be the pick for Urel. Uh, we got the Sleep Darts, Slumber Shells, rather, for Ana getting, again, those slows. Ace in the hole and uh, Varian going into the power, parry talent overpower. So anytime he blocks an auto attack, he's going to do additional damage and reset his heroic strike. Yeah, I guess. I guess. But if, if I like, I feel like if you're doing that, power hungry is just better then. So I don't know. I guess that's fair. That's fair. All right, first tribute coming up in the bot lane. I mean, some of them, but some of them are also very close. Bruiser camps here. Gonna meet at the wall of piecemeal. The taunt going out. Dark Knight getting very low with the healing grenade. And you know what? Ugh, I'm so sorry that we missed that kill on the Thrall too. But in this case, it was one or the other, and we got the other. Right? Yeah, yeah. Just just throw out a grenade. Nice, nice easy taunt. Speaking of taunts, out onto the uh, Nazebo there. Not quite able to finish the job, but very close. Is going to force Nazebo back. And the first tribute of the game going over to Tidecaller. Checking in on Urel, who is currently working on this bruiser camp in the mid lane as level sevens are up here first for tide collar all right so we've got the calamity i mean it's illusionist right sheej as long as we're talking about those level 13 talents that we're not paying attention to man just don't tell me you didn't take glass cannon with calamity Oh, okay, I won't check. <laughs> There's the taunt. Big orb coming out from Li Ming, but silence onto the Varian here. That zombie wall really locking down the Varian, but Ana's able to keep Varian alive for just long enough to make it out. <laughs> wow. Uh, let's see. Her level one is actually 100% completely personal preference and situational. There's no standard level. You know, that's... I mean, that's fair... ish right, right shenanigans like it's it's not easy to like if you're used to taking shield wall you're in danger you're just like oh, i gotta parry right i gotta do that uh there's that zombie wall though coming in onto varian he's gonna get silenced but it's gonna be uther getting taken out first living bomb onto both the rainer and Li ming here but varian's very low has to pull back waiting for those healing darts uh, I think that one actually got intercepted. Hit both the uh, Li Ming and Rainer, I think. But the zombie wall coming up. Taunt going out under Rainer, or, uh, the Nazebo, the rather. Varian going to get taken out. Rise Robin, not in as much danger as I thought, as Umbob gets that flame strike. And one down for each side, but here comes Uther coming back in. A lot of poke potential here from the Tide Collar Murgles as Rainer going to get caught in that silence. And that should give Piecemeal the opportunity now to channel this fully. And you know what? I mean, so back to that parry thing. Uh, it is what it is, right? You're parrying. You're, you throw up your parry because you don't want to get hit by the flame strike. But, I mean, you might get autoed, right? Prevent that auto attack damage. Especially if your uh, Kael'thas goes into the... Um, what is the name of that talent? 
I don't know the name of that talent. Let's let's take a look. Uh, Sunfire Enchantment, right? Those those extra auto attacks. Man, can you imagine how much that would screw over a a Kael'thas with parries? Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely everybody does it. Speaking of which, there's the taunt. Oh my goodness, so much blow-up damage onto Stukov. Stukov had no chance as the taunt coming in with the leaming. And you know, this is this is the uh, combo as old as time, right? Varian and Li Ming. Since these two heroes could play together, they've been played together. Taunt was so strong with Li Ming when uh, I think Varian came out second, if I remember right. Li Ming was out well before Varian. And I want to say, like, that was the key. That was <laughs> key. Get it, huh? Uh, so there's the taunt with the cleanse. So they're going to be able to get out, but the uh, tribute picked up by Ana. So... We're done fighting here. As level 10s available for both teams, so we do have the Power Blast, Divine Storm, Flailing Swipe, Earthquake, and... I'm just going to call it now Ravenous Spear. Uh, then for Tide Column Murgles, we've got the Wave of Force, the Sacred Ground, Nano Boost, uh, Hyperion, and Shield Wall. So there's, there you go, there's that Shield Wall that we were looking for earlier. Varian gonna get the charge onto Kel'thas, doesn't get the taunt, gets rooted and s silenced here. Big Divine Storm, Varian gonna get taken out. The boss, however, is picked up for Tidecaller Murgles. The zombie while coming in onto Rainer also has the uh, spiders chewing him down with the zombies. But ultimately just the one death onto Varian and this boss is uh, gonna get some work started here. That said, tribute up in the mid lane and it's on the safe side for piecemeal. It was back in like 2017. Yeah, they they did, they did. But it's still, I mean, it's still really good. Because it's just point click dead. So two tributes now on both sides. Boss sitting at about 10%, so it's going to fall here soon. Are we still looking for a fight here? It is Ravenous Spirit, by the way. There's the fight with the zombie wall, the silence. Nice play into this double kill. Varian and Raynor both going to get taken out. Why were they there? I don't know. Maybe they thought that uh, Piecemeal was working on getting the boss going. And Piecemeal just said, you know what? Just like in game one, they set up a, a, a bush gank in a bush that, in this case, was actually, you know, obviously clearly favorable for them. But, uh... Tidecaller not kind of putting that together that they might be in that bush waiting for them. So nice play by uh, Piecemeal to get that double kill. Next tribute is a curse point, and it's going to be slightly in favor of Tidecaller. It's just a little bit on their side of the map, but it's a fairly open area. Varian going to get the taunt here, looking for the kill on the Silver Jackal, but they don't quite get it. Varian getting stunned by that Divine Storm and the, the Flailing Swipe, knocking everybody back. So some ultimates used. Oh, Silver Jackal wants to go into the Hyperion. <laughs> As you do. When you have about 100 health, one or two hits from that Hyperion would kill you. But, uh, you know, it's all, it's all good. <laughs> all right, mid lane is going to fall. The, uh, the, the well is going to go down. Urel in behind this team. Varian looking for the charge here. Gets the taunt onto Kel'thas, but not quite the follow-up. There's the long-range sleep dart with the healing grenade. Kotip falling very low here is not going to have the shield wall for this pyroblast. Shit. Oh, no, he will. <laughs> just barely comes up. Never mind. So it's just the one for nothing trade there as Uther going to fall. And here comes Tidecaller with the curse see what they do with it getting started in the bot lane we got Urel Urel coming up into the mid lane for psychic you still out there are you enjoying all of this Urel play I know you are and it looks like uh, piecemeal electing to pick up this bruiser camp to help with their defense Uther going out a little forward there has that well met for the damage oh my god it is glass cannon oh my god why i 
I hope you die every single fight now, Sheej. Teleport, dead. Like, shit just happens. Just like this, right now. The taunt into their own zombie wall. And, uh, and Uther dies. But now Varian, in a bit of trouble here, is having to pull back with the team. This is a, a four on four, but with two heroes very low. And that earthquake coming out, slowing everybody down. Not quite able to get the kill, but they do head on to the boss now. And again, Varian's still pretty low. Ana should be able to, to heal him up pretty decently here. What do we have for this level 13? Smelling salts, so anytime somebody gets stunned and Ana uh, shoots them, they get a bunch of armor, which, you know what, why not? You got Uther, you got gravity laps. So there you go. Gotta confirm those variant taunts, no doubt, right? Hold up, let me let me go ahead and uh, take last cannon so that I, <laughs> so that I can teleport in. All right, boss coming in. There's no wall, just the tower up here, so it's gonna have a little bit of time between Kalefoss and Nazebo. The they're gonna get some long range poke damage onto it here as it makes its way onto the bottom keep. It's sitting about 75% health here, and there goes the Hyperion. So it's gonna get some. Uh, Yamato cannons here. Big taunt out onto Uther once again. The silence not enough when all of your damage is coming from range. And the bottom keep gonna go down here. Uh, the living bomb getting spread into the team. Actually, it looks like it must have been spread to Varian. So just that bottom keep for Tidecaller Murgles, but very much uh, in charge of this game. They've gotten all three forts down. They've now gotten a keep down. And they've got level 16s. And it, it's so awkward just to see the way that these team fights have gone because it's stun followed by a zombie wall followed by a silence and Uther dies every time. It's it's almost like the combination is happening from Tidecaller, but it's not. It's happening from piecemeal. And Uther's the one dying. It's... It's such an awkward reverse play there. It's it's like uh, throwing the throwing the basketball into your own hoop. Maybe he forgot he didn't pick orbs. Could be, yeah. Could be. All right, so they know Varian's there. MJ Doom's gonna pull back out. This is a five on five, uh, but piecemeal doesn't have to take this fight. Oh, but they get that nice gravity lapse, and there goes the Urel. That's a great way to start that. They're not going to get the uh, Tribute, and there is a boss now working on their their keep. MJ Doom is going to get caught by the taunt, but the cleanse coming out. Flame Strike going to hit the Varian. The Zombie Wall going to get Varian as well. There's the Silence. Uther not in position to, to die on this one. Does this boss... Yeah, this boss is going to get through that keep for sure. Might even get some core damage now. I don't know that I like that play. Level 16's up for both teams. It looks like, uh, it looks like piecemeal's just saying the boss will eventually die. We need to get structures here. So let's try to get level, uh, or try to get what we can out of the top lane. But you know what? I mean... Uh, doesn't matter. Boss is going to finish this, and there's also some catapults. Winions for the win. There you go. There you go. Rodney, trade core for fort. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, like, but they did get the fort, so who's the real winner here? What an anticlimactic end to this series. And by the way, full upset from Tidecallers taking the 2-1 victory over piecemeal. We'll show those brackets again here in just a moment as we get the standings here. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I didn't die with, fair enough. You know what? Clearly it was the big brain play and I just I just could not get on your level, Sheej. <laughs> oh.
All right, so I did mention those brackets. And again, number three team, number six team is, is who we were watching here. And Tide Caller Murgles taking the 2 1 victory over piecemeal, the number six team with the upset. There have been a few upsets here this week. We did see a number, I think a number eight team beat a number one team. Uh, we did in Division B East, yeah. Um, I think that might be the only one. That was uh, Bread Rising over Phoenix Rising Ruby. Um, I think that might be the only eight over one. There's still some maps or matches rather to, to come up here tomorrow night. So those of you out there who might be watching right now, and uh, if you happen to be a caster, there are about a half a dozen matches tomorrow. One of them <clears throat> might be ours. Just throwing that out there. Um, but uh, yeah, so feel free to, to check those out. Otherwise, um, you know, my, my voice is a little little done here. So I think I'm, I was thinking I might do another one, but I think I'm going to be done for the evening. So uh, thanks, everybody, for joining me for these replay casts. I'm, I'm glad that we were able to pick these up. Some absolutely stellar matches. We saw House of Chez earlier with Regen Anomaly. Uh, obviously, this playoff match here. And it was just... It was so much fun. I'm, I'm so glad that we got to see these. But like I said, that that last game, uh, Tide Collar over piecemeal, it was just, it was just anticlimactic. You're like, ah, I'm gonna, I can't wait for there to be this big, big play and then just, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? Let's let's take a look at our Div C bingo. Did we get any fun and exciting things out of this one? I don't know. Let's see. Jump up to that. What do we got on these cards? So, we have, uh, let me see if I can find my master spreadsheet on this, because I'd already marked some. All right, Dipsy Bingo, what did we get? Anybody mark any down from this? R. Sanders, thanks so much for stopping by. Glad that you enjoyed the, uh, the cast. Feel free to, to follow the stream. I do these pretty regularly. Sorry, Colonel Pants, but you know what? There is a uh, there is a replay available. Okay, at least seven heroes die over a boss fight. Pretty sure we didn't see that. One team gets two full objectives back to back. Uh, we didn't see that with Curse. Did we see it? Oh, we definitely saw it for Volskaya, right? Didn't we? Pretty sure that was on Volskaya. So we'll mark that one. Uh, winning team has fewer kills. I wasn't even looking. We'd have to go back and check that. This game, it was not the case, I don't think. But I don't think that was the case for any of these. For, for the, any of these games here. Uh, let's see. What else did we have? Leap of Faith into the fray used to save ally who dies anyway. Don't think that one happened. Uh, one team starts a boss, but the other team steals it and wins the game. Not quite. Band skin probably happened, but we didn't catch it. Um, all mercenary camps, didn't see that one either. <laughs> I think there's another. <laughs> uh, zero deaths after four minutes. Oh, that didn't wait. definitely didn't happen. No juice pirates. Uh, someone is revived, brought back, and dies in the same team fight. Pretty sure we didn't see that. Team dies on core with 10% left. Didn't happen. Casters. I didn't have any animals on the stream tonight. None of them. They're all passed out. Both teams lose all keeps. Displacement ability saves an opponent. Did we see that? I don't think we did. We saw the opposite. Lots of the opposite. Non-healer has more self-healing than all healers. And, yeah, I didn't see that. First, uh, fort down before first objective. Let's see. Um, did that first fort go down before the first objective? I think so. I think I think we'll mark that one too. Pretty sure that happened. Hero trait quest not completed by level 20. Uh, we definitely got a mega kill in there, right? Whole team hides in a bush for 20. Uh, I, I modified that one, so we're definitely getting that one. There were a couple of those from piecemeal. Two words, twin blades. We didn't get any twin blades. So, all right. So I think we got another four in, in this set. If I, I don't have the official. So if you're running your, your bingo cards, um, You'll have to connect the dots for those and, and identify specifically, but I think those things happened. So there you go. I don't know. There's eight potentials out there, possibly even nine. Uh, so, you know, 
double check your cards. Could be worth a could be worth a free game to you. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, check your Division C uh, chat in Discord. Check the pins for that. Select your card, and there you go. But that's it. We're gonna go ahead and wrap up, and uh, gonna go ahead and send you guys over to uh, Alicia Wins because she's playing some hots. Thanks again for joining me, everybody. Have a good night.